Glass is written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, and it's the sequel to both Split and Unbreakable. So, Glass was actually a film that I was really excited for when I first watched Split. Because when I first watched Split, I actually really enjoyed that film. But to be honest, I actually liked Split less the more that I watched it. Uh, just because the writing just really seemed to drag it down for me. And the therapist character in the movie was just really annoying. And also for that reason, um, when Glass's release date started approaching, I actually was getting less excited for it because, like I said, I was just... I, I ended up not liking Split all that much, despite the fact that I do own it on Blu-ray. But, coming out of it, I do have to say that I found it pretty enjoyable and entertaining throughout. Um, now that being said, there are things that really bothered me with it, and it's actually plenty of things about it that bothered me, but for some reason, that didn't really quite stop me from really enjoying the movie as a whole. So first off, I think Shyamalan's direction for this film is pretty excellent honestly because when you're watching this film you can tell that he did have a pretty uncompromising vision behind this because of just the way the camera work was utilized and the way that the score was comprised within the scenes like it really just was really immersive and fitting for the kind of atmosphere he was going for um and then it kind of goes to a really different route of the film that is mostly advertised in the trailer so you pretty much see it coming but it spends the majority of the film under the circumstances that are brought in after the first 15 minutes. And to me, this is definitely where the film starts running into those issues uh, that I expected from it, unfortunately. And it's really mostly the dialogue. Like, the dialogue in this film can get really spoon-fed and really expository and just really not subtle about anything that it wants to do at all. But despite the film having these writing issues, uh, it still managed to pull off, you know, a decent handful of really immersive and engaging moments. There was actually some emotionally engaging moments in this film as well. Like, I'm not saying that I was tearing up at every time the film was trying to make me cry, but there are some genuine character moments in this film um, that really do kind of get to you. And it's just because of the way that it's directed and the way that the score is utilized and the way that some of the characters are established. But really I'm just talking about the superhero characters in this movie. Because the superhero characters in this movie, uh, you know, Bruce Willis, Samuel Jackson, and James McAvoy, um, their characters are really well fleshed out in a really interesting way. But the problem is, uh, the other side characters in this movie, uh, Bruce Willis's son, um, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Samuel Jackson's mom, um, those characters are really underused and are kind of sloppily written because they're only the only purpose that they serve in this film is to really just explain stuff to the audience, which is a really a huge, huge pet peeve of mine. It just aggravates me so much to see when a film like visually shows you something, but in the middle of it, it's explaining exactly what you're seeing. And this film runs into that issue a nice handful of times, especially during the third act of the film. The third act is a really like hit and miss portion of the film to where one thing happens and I was just like, oh, that was just really poorly written and not very good. But then the next second it does something to where I'm like, oh, that was actually directed really well. And I'm actually immersed in that, into that situation. But again, despite the film having these issues, the way that it was executed with its direction and the score um, really saves the movie and keeps it afloat. And also, one very important thing that I haven't even touched on at all, uh, are, are the performances. The performances are really good, obviously, especially from James McAvoy's character. He again just puts on a powerhouse of a performance. Um, he really just acts the shit out of this role. And I guarantee you the Academy for next year's Oscar is not going to recognize him again. And that's just gonna suck major ass, but whatever, we're just gonna have to deal with it. Samuel Jackson's character, Mr. Glass, uh, for me was probably one of the most least interesting main characters there was in the film. And maybe that just has to do with the fact that he didn't have much screen time or dialogue in this movie. But when he finally does have some dialogue, it's really just there to bring up the whole comic book thing and how this movie is related to a comic book. And this movie brings up this comic book thing a lot and you know I get why it's there it's trying to be self-aware about about the reality that it's in 
and is trying to, you know, be subversive about this whole comic book and, 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 and superhero approach. But, um, I feel like sometimes it worked, but it just did it a little too much at times where I'm just like, dude, I get it. You need to, you know, put your foot on the brake there. You're really hitting me over the head with this thing. Bruce Willis's character is also very well executed in this film. And I really loved that they did not squander his character because Unbreakable was is definitely one of my favorite M. Night Shyamalan films. And I'm glad that this film really brought that film back to life in a really respectful way because that was another thing I was really concerned about. I was like, well, I really hope this film doesn't shit on Unbreakable. But luckily, I think it actually pays pretty good respects to Unbreakable. And it brings his character to life in this film in a really interesting way, in a really insightful way. And, you know, this film goes in a pretty ballsy direction, you know, with the story in terms of all these characters. And that's, again, one thing that I really appreciated about the film was that it felt like an actual vision. It felt like something that he wanted to do and not just something the studio wanted him to do uh, just to make money. And that was a, a really refreshing element to the film. I also really enjoyed the color palette to this film. I really enjoyed the fact that, you know, it really emphasized on the fact that Bruce Willis' color is green and Samuel Jackson's color is purple. I did probably enjoy it maybe a little bit more uh, in the in the previous one, Unbreakable, just because it was much more subtle about it and it wasn't as in your face um, about what the colors mean. I mean, in this movie, there's there's literally a scene where you see a neon purple sign and it says villains, and you see a green on, and, and, and green on what the fuck, and then you see a green neon sign that says heroes, and it's just like. Okay, well, you kind of, I guess you just, you just kind of spell it out for anybody who didn't already get it. And on top of that, it's, it's honestly referenced throughout this entire film. There, there's, there's many different times where it's very clear that it wants you to see that these colors are, are connected to these characters. So, I mean, I still enjoyed it through and through, but I think I maybe just liked it a little bit more um, when I watched Unbreakable because it's just a little bit more subtle about it. But all in all, um, even though I do think this film is littered with flaws, I still, like I said, really enjoyed this film, surprisingly. I went into this film really thinking that I wasn't going to really enjoy it all that much, um, but surprisingly I walked out of it um, thinking that I definitely did not waste my time, and there was actually a lot of really immersive and engaging parts of this film, and it was directed well, the score was really incorporated in it well, um, all of the main characters in it were really well established and fleshed out, and yeah, I mean, even though it has all those shitty writing issues that I expected, uh, I still found it to be a pretty enjoyable movie. So I'm going to give Glass a 7.5 out of 10. Etc. This film is pretty mixed and divisive, so I'm really, really curious to see what you guys have to say about this film, because... I really have no idea what y'all are going to think about it because, you know, people are coming out of this film saying that they hate it, some people come out of it saying that they love it, and then some people, kind of like me, are like, well, I think it's pretty good, but it's, it's, it's definitely got some issues. Anyways, thank you so much for hearing what I had to say about Glass. Uh, if you really enjoyed what I had to say, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.